Hello and welcome. We are here to gather and talk about tough back to school transitions. And it is no joke to be a parent in these times as we're <laughs> trying to figure out what do we do with our, you know, our children as they are being depleted from all the newness of their new school year. They're trying to get into a rhythm with the new, um, you know, kind of agenda for the day, new wake up times, kind of getting back into that sort of groove that we all want to be in as we're getting back into school. And I have three top tips for back to school transitions for you today. I'm so excited. My, I'm, my name is Vanessa Callahan. I am the, uh, the lead coach and founder of Raising Our Resilience, where we empower parents to um, bust through the myth that we have to do this on our own and we need to be perfect parents, replacing that with a much more empowering uh, perspective, which is that of course we need tools, of course we need strategies. We're doing something really important and tough and there are whole training programs for other adults working with children, like you know, care providers, school teachers, to learn how to work with children and parents deserve that same level of support. So here um, in our Monday Mindset Moment series, we get together on the Raising Our Resilience um, channel and community to empower you with some tools and tips and strategies. And we're gonna dive right into this back to school transition piece. So um, first of all, let's just acknowledge that back to school can be hard, can be tough. And it's not just tough on you, it's tough on the kids. And here are a few reasons why. Um, and I only go here because I want us to make this the most amazing school year possible. And if the only way you can make something amazing is if we can acknowledge what's hard and tough and we can strategize about how to improve those areas so that we can smooth the way to having a great time. Oftentimes we uh, skip the work. And so here we are in the work together. Um, and if you're able to uh, say hello on the Facebook group, just say hi, um, also here on Zoom. And that way I can welcome you in and support you even better today. Let me know where you're tuning in from, ages of your kids, and what is the toughest thing about your back to school transition so I can reply to your comment and give you some personalized tips and advice. Yeah, okay. So how are we gonna make this the most amazing year ever? Acknowledge what's hard. So for your child, you know, maybe transitions really stood out to you because you're seeing that getting them out the door an hour earlier than you had to in the summer with more steps like packing lunch, um, you know, getting that homework folder together, getting your sports equipment together if they're doing after school things um, or other supplies. Maybe it's the transition that, you know, out the door that is the hardest thing. Um, perhaps it's that they're coming home to you exhausted and in the grumpiest mood. You know, I've, uh, I have several clients right now who just had one-on-one -on -one sessions with me during their immersion year in my program, the Family Foundations Immersion. And we'd been talking about um, what do I do with my kids' big emotions when they come through the door or I pick them up at, at the bus stop and they're losing their cool in ways that are really not constructive or productive. Um, so maybe that's what's tough for you right now. Be, um, just, just name something that you have in mind for these next three tips so that you can be working through that tough challenge as I lay them out, all right? Okay, and you can even share what it is in the comments or in the chat. Please go ahead, let me know what, what is it that is the hardest thing about this back to school transition and you can get that personal support. Okay, so first thing I wanna share with you is that in order for children to be able to see you as a trusted thought partner, someone they can collaborate with to puzzle through difficult things that they may be experiencing at school, you need to create safety within your relationship to have difficult conversations where you're not immediately jumping to trying to fix the problem, where you're not making wrong how they feel about the problem, where you're creating instead an opportunity for exploring, and I really want this word to stick with you, exploring with an open mind, right? Um, with wondering about what it is that could be, that, what, what is happening for the child? And this is what in our, our program, we lean into like positive discipline, Jane Nelson's idea of connecting before correcting. All my clients end up working with that tool at some point. So how do we create the safety of an open dialogue? We have something called a non-directional conversation. And when we say non-directional, it means you're not trying to get something from them or make an impression on them in this conversation. You're actually making time for just connection where 
communication starts to flow. Oftentimes we skip this step and we try to get right into directing the conversation towards a goal. We try to get to the bottom of a problem immediately and fix it. And really your child needs some warm up time with you. And sometimes, and this can actually be a lovely way to transition in and out of the, the bigger pieces of the day. So imagine having an open conversation in the mornings heading into the school day. What might surface? You might say something like, um, gosh, you know, it's already Tuesday. Can you believe it? And then might say something like, what, what, what do you have going on at school on Tuesdays again? Um, tell me all, tell me about it, you know? Um, or um, I heard that Tuesdays are yoga day or whatever. Um, and, and say like, have you had a yoga class yet? And just leaving it kind of open um, to what topics might surface. So it doesn't have to even be that specific, but build in this connection time the beginning of the day and, and, and during the, the next time you connect. Try not to have an, a strong agenda for that conversation for a whole five minutes or more. When you connect before you correct or direct the conversation, what you're doing is you're saying, hey, I am someone you can just talk to. It's not always about what's happening next. It's not always about what I need from you. It's not always about fixing a problem or giving you feedback or trying to get you to be motivated to do something. We're actually just non-directionally just chatting and connecting. And one of the ways you can do that is just in transit, right? Just build it in as a kind of a, a routine that you do in transit. Now, sometimes we get stuck. And so I really like this book and it's a recommendation. Stop asking, how was your day? 444 better questions to help you connect with your child. You might check this out and add this to your little um, you know, cheat sheet stack of books and resources. I really like this. Um, and it, it pertains to a wide variety of ages too. So you, your kids can grow up with it and it's also not too old. Your, kids, your teens and tweens are not too old to still engage with some of these questions. Um, as a good resource I, I'm curating for you. Hope you like it. Um, because what we want to do is make sure that we have some kind of one-on-one -on -one time with kids. Now, sometimes your child won't doesn't do well with just sit and talk. So a hot tip I have for you is pick some activity that you and your child can do one-on-one -on -one in the next week with each of your ch children, if you have many children, and that you can have a non-directional open dialogue time while doing that activity. Maybe it's, it is driving from here to there, or maybe it's walking to, to um, you know, somewhere in your neighborhood or somewhere that you drive to that you like, you know, it's a nice area that's has things to look at, you know, urban or suburban or uh, wilderness. Um, pick an activity in the next week where you will spend one-on-one -on -one time with, you, with each of your children, even if it's just for 15 minutes to 20 minutes. That is enough time to establish a bit of a groove of open dialogue, okay? And the, the, the hot tip I have for that is if they do bring up something hard, something difficult, stay in your curiosity. Ask more questions. Pause and leave space for them to say more. Careful not to fix it immediately because we often hurdle over these steps and we actually become less appealing to bring our problems to if we don't feel, if the child doesn't feel heard, if the child doesn't feel like you're giving advice from an informed place. When children hit about seven and a half to eight, they're especially gets, they especially become sensitive to this. And you start to get into that pre-adolescence and adolescent time where they say, you don't get this. And then you're a little bit like up a paddle, up, up a creek without a paddle. So let's make sure that you do get this and you give some space to those conversations. Good, yes. I wanted it to be something easy, approachable, free, and accessible to you. Anybody in any situation can find 15 to 20 minutes, no matter what, even if it's during a chore or you're not trying to drive things forward, okay? That's the big thing. Yeah, no agenda, non-directional, open dialogue. Good, lots of wondering, curiosity, and listening. Now, the next thing I want you to be aware of is a kind of a two, two for one, okay? All educators who have been in the field long enough and administrators and people like me who also are consultants and teacher trainers, we like to share a secret with new teachers and also care, the parents and caregivers, which is the rule of 10 weeks. Why 10 weeks? What does that even mean? The rule of 10 weeks means that in the first 10 weeks of school, we don't have an expectation that children are going to be able to rise to the level of our rules and, and kind of 
way that things go. We know that they need 10 whole weeks on average for the, for the group to be able to internalize and what we call normalize the norms. <laughs> so for example, a child remembering their homework uh, folder, um, remembering to clean up after themselves at lunch, um, being in a good mood all the way through the end of the day, right? Not being worn out, um, being able to manage their emotions easily and be able to solve problems with their peers. Um, even like uh, uh, the, the etiquette around how they manage their workspace or how, how they treat others and, and all of these norms and kind of expectations. We give kids a lot of time and a lot of reminders and a lot of training around what those are for, the, for a good eight to 10 weeks of the school year, knowing that until we get to 10 weeks, we can't call a problem a problem, not really. So if there are problems surfacing, if part of the reason why you're at this training, listening to this video right now is because your child is experiencing a particularly tough transition and you're getting difficult feedback from you know the, the care caregivers at school where it's like, kid is not, not getting along with others, maybe starting some problems or having difficulty getting along hang in there for the 10 weeks. It's, it's, it's a real thing. And know that this is a time to double down on support and guidance and training and review and these kinds of things. So, and so part two of this is not only the knowing about the rule of 10 weeks, but applying it towards your relationship that you're building with a teacher or caregiver or other trusted adult at your child's school. You want to have an open line of communication, yes, with your kids, that non-directional dialogue we were talking about, but also with at least one trusted adult on campus. Now, not everybody has access to um, you know, open lines of communication with the adults on campus, but most of us have at least one person. It might be an administrator, it might be even just the secretary or per, the, the, you know, the person who greets the kids um, and the parents at the door. It might, be your, it might be your child's classroom teacher, but you might also look outside of that to the recess staff or after school staff or a coach if your child is in sports or a drama teacher, music teacher, et cetera. Establish an open line of, communi an open line of communication with that trusted adult and speak to this 10 week phenomenon. Really let there be space and grace for the, in these first 10 weeks of school to figure out how the rhythm is gonna look and help your child really internalize the expectations. And also double down your efforts here. It's okay to communicate with this trusted adult, you know, several times a week at first, especially if there are issues coming up. And establish that, that you understand this is just the getting started of the school year amount of communication. I've been on the receiving end of these communications, friends, so I want you to know that I really appreciate it when, when parents and caregivers would come to me as a classroom teacher, right, 15 years, as a classroom teacher, and I teach teachers this all the time, I appreciate when they come to me with their concerns and they say, how can we work together so that we can get through this transition period into school? I've heard it's 10 weeks. I mean, it's music to my ears. Oh, thank goodness you realize that you don't need to be, you know, catastrophizing <laughs> things if the first two weeks aren't going well and we're only in the first month of school. Um, and you know that it takes effort to really make this transition smooth and coordination. Because things you might do like, what are we gonna do at home and at school when my child tries to hit? What am I gonna do at home and at school when my child continues to forget their homework folder? What are we gonna do together? How can we both be a part of what's going to support my child in transitioning smoothly into the school year, okay? All right, so for review, number one, open non-directional dialogue with your child, become that trusted safe space for your child to have difficult conversations, try to avoid fixing things too quickly, and only being the kind of task manager in their lives. Make sure you're building in about 15 to 20 minutes of one-on-one -on -one time with your child at least once a week for these first weeks of school, especially. And really come up with a way that you, you know, get their body moving, whatever it takes to open up that dialogue. Number two, open up a line of dialogue also with at least one trusted adult on your child's school campus if they're out of school, okay? And acknowledge the 10 week, the rule of 10 weeks, that it does take those 10 weeks to establish things. And this is a great time for you to be doubling down, collaborating and giving space um, for this for, in time for things to settle in and work, right? Um, and the, last but not least, and this is an important one, kids are so sensitive to the rhythms of the day. And so if you are knowing that you're establishing a different routine than you were just in in the summer, and I mean, just could be five weeks ago, it doesn't have to be 
last week for the kids to still be transitioning, right? The rule of 10 weeks. Know that if you, if you can, as best as possible, maintain certain parts of, the, parts of the routine as consistently as you can, while you let the kids know if there's going to be an exception. So let's say that um, you notice that if your kid definitely needs calories as soon as they get, get picked up, and you need to have dinner on the table by 6.30 or they, 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 the evening does not go well. You're going to want to stick to that plan as much as possible and be consistent about some of the very, very basic things like wake up time, sleep time, and meal times and snack times. And if you have half day or rest times at home or stay at home, younger ones, okay? Keep that rhythm as consistently as possible. Your child does have a biorhythm related to rest and food, especially and bringing in those calories. Also, you might notice that your child needs more food and more rest than, than um, they did during the summer months, um, especially in these first 10 weeks of school, as it takes a lot of energy to transition and integrate all of this newness. New kids, new classroom, new, new teachers, new materials, new learning, new procedures. Um, you know, maybe there's been some turnover even in their specials classes and new, new uh, rules and kind of formats. Maybe they're on a new campus, right? Imagine the last time you were in a new situation and how much it required of you. Um, and so one thing I would build in, in addition to these regular rhythms, is something soothing. And two things that can be really soothing is some downtime and a lot of previewing. So my final tip of this, so take your last notes here. I want to welcome Rachel, one of my alums. Rachel, I'm so glad you're here. Um, build in something soothing, like some real downtime, like where the lights are out, the blinds are down, you listen to music and you look through books together, just picture books. Um, something like that. Um, maybe it is even time in, a, uh, you know, actually laying down on a couch or on a bed and, you know, doing something really relaxing. Um, maybe it's a longer bath time than usual. I had parents who would bring their kids home and put them in the bath immediately because they knew it would help them, especially in the beginning of the school year when things are so intense, they like, they like to really help them down regulate and soothe themselves with some water and that sensation of being like, you know, just in the warmth of it and um, having all the sensorial, you know, um, stimulation of being in a bath or in a shower. And then um, the second half of that was um, this the, to preview. And the previewing part, which you can do, helps kids so much to integrate the new routine is before you move on to the next step, preview what it is. And the younger the kids are, the more often you need to do it and the closer to the actual transition to the next thing. With older kids, like, like uh, Rachel's daughter, you can preview the whole day. And then when you pick them up, you can re you can re refresh and preview the whole afternoon and evening. And then you can have a visual for, for parents who have kids six and older, especially. You can have a visual of the week that you can go over at the top of the week and really fill in what's happening, what's happening that's regular, regular after school activities, and what might be different. Yeah, might, what might be an exception this week. So they can have a heads up about it. Use a visual so they have something to reference that's not just what's in their head or just getting auditory information from you so that also they have a resource they can refer to and start to become more independent with refreshing their memory of the routine. This is an, this was a tip packed video. Feel free to rewatch it, listen, pause it, take notes, pick one thing if you know to start with. If you do the non-directional dialogue one-on-one -on -one time with your child, that's a win for the week. If you reach out to a parent or to, to another caregiver at the school to establish a line of communication and acknowledge the 10 weeks, that's a, that's a win. If you kind of review with other caregivers what your regular rhythm of the day is for sleep and wake time and meals, that's a win. And if you, for a bonus, if you want to build in the, um, you know, something, some kind of downtime when they get home in some part of the day, and the previewing tool that's yeah extra cherries on top of this cupcake all right all right i hope you have a sweet start of your year if you are struggling don't do it alone reach out if you haven't had a parent a parent um you know strategy breakthrough session with me in at least six months you can qualify for another one that also goes for alums rachel um and i can put a link in the chat for that i will ask you though to please go ahead and take the strengths quiz um, and before we meet, so we can just see where you're at with your goals, 
where things are going with your different skills and what you might want the most support on when we meet. So I'm gonna throw this in the chat. This is a way for you to just hop right on my calendar. I open some just for this back to school time in September for folks who are really looking for support right now. And it's a complimentary 30 minute Zoom session where we'll walk through your quiz results and get you at least one to two or even three strategies you can try right away. It's also a way to just um, check in with you and see if there's any further steps you'd like to take around either re renewing for mentorship and hopping into our next cohort, um, you know, getting some maintenance sessions and or um, signing up as a, a first time private or program client. So lots of options on the menu. I'm not sure what's a fit for you and no pressure to take that step. This session really is for you. And we'll check in at the end to see if you want to have a further conversation. Oh, you're so welcome, Rachel. Yeah, glad that you love these tips today. Um, and lots of love to each and every one of you. May you continue to build your practice so that you become a calm, empowered parent or caregiver, raising happy, confident, resilient children. It's so worth it. And I'm so glad that you've um, had a chance to connect in and resource yourselves today. Um, it's my pleasure, my honor to serve you. And until next time, be well, and we'll, we'll connect soon. Lots of love, everybody. Bye for now.